All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the inverse square law. And the inverse square law is, is used a lot in science and, and definitely in physics um, to, to calculate problems related to the force of gravity, the electric force, the magnetic force, to calculate light, sound, and radiation intensity. And in this coming chapter, we're going to talk about these top two. We're going to talk about the force of gravity and the electric force. And they both follow this inverse square law. So to introduce the inverse square law, I'd like to just show you um, and go by the name inverse square um, and what it means. If we just look at a number, say, I don't know, 5, for example. Okay, if we look at 5 and you wanted to take the inverse square of 5, let's see what that would be. The inverse of 5 is 1 over 5, but don't forget we got to square it. And so we take the inverse square, that would be 1 over 5 squared, which is equal to 1 over 25. Okay, let's try it again for a different number. Let's take the inverse square of 2. Okay, well the inverse of 2 is 1 over 2 and square it, and so now we've got 1 over 4. And so that is, that's basically what the inverse square and how you calculate it is, is um, and that's what you do. And we're going to look at how uh, the inverse square law is related to these calculations in physics. And so if you look at any of these properties in, in science, you'll see that the force of gravity or the electric force or all of them equal and, and can be used to calculate we use the inverse square law. But in the inverse square law, when we do these calculations, we use the distance between them. And so it's the, the inverse squared of the distance between the two objects. And that'll make sense as we go through a few examples. And so what I've got uh, is three examples that I think will help us understand how to do some of these physics calculations involving the inverse square law. So if we look at this first example, it says two spaceships currently feel a gravitational force of 20 newtons between them. What would the force of gravity be between them if the distance between them were to A double or B reduced by half? As in all physics questions, I think the first place to start and the best place to start is by drawing a picture. So it says we have two spaceships. Okay, um, let me do my best at drawing a spaceship. There's one spaceship and here is the other one. Okay, and it says that they currently fill uh, a gravitational force of 20 newtons between them. So if we look here, let me um, switch colors. So between these two spaceships, there's 20 newtons of force due to gravity. Okay, and then if we look at A here, it says it wants to know what the force of gravity would be if you doubled the distance between them. And so again, let's draw a picture on A. So if we draw the same spaceship here, and now we were to double the distance, and it didn't tell us what the distance was, but we just double it, and so now our second spaceship is out here somewhere. It wants to know what the force of gravity is here. And we can solve this problem using the inverse square law. So if you remember, force of gravity, when we calculate it, Part of that calculation involves this inverse square law calculation. And so we're going to take the inverse square of the distance between these two objects. Um, now again, we don't know the distance between them originally, but we, knew, we, we know that the distance between them is doubled. And so if we put a 2 in here for the distance, signifying that the distance was doubled, 1 over 2 squared is equal to 1 over Four. And so what this tells us is now the force of gravity is going to be one-fourth what it was before. And we know that the force of gravity before was 20 newtons. And so now this new force of gravity is one-fourth what it was before, and that's equal to five newtons. Okay, and so that's your answer for part A. So you can see here um, the force of gravity is dependent on distance. If you move farther away, the force of gravity goes down. And what we're going to look at in part B is what happens when the distance between two objects is reduced, so they get closer together. 
And so let's draw another picture on B. Again, this spaceship is staying here, but we're moving it half the distance away now. And so the other one will be right here. And so if we look at now, what we want to calculate is the force of gravity in this scenario. Okay. Well, now we're going to use the inverse square law again. So I always like to set it up like this. Force of gravity is equal to 1 over the distance between them squared. Now we know that the distance in part B is being reduced by half. And so what I'm going to put in for my distance term is 1 half. 1 over 1 half, but don't forget to square it. And so when you take the inverse of this uh, number, now you've got 1 over 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to put a 1 right there, and 2 squared is 4. And so 1 divided by 1 fourth. Remember the division is just multiplying, but you're multiplying by the, by the reciprocal. And so if we take 1 and times it by the reciprocal of 1 fourth, that'll be 1 times 4, which is equal to 4. And so we just flip this bottom one up, and, and it's 4 times now. So the force of gravity is now 4 times what it was before. Well, before it was 20 newtons. And so if we take 20 and times it by 4, we get 80 newtons. And so um, we can see here that the force of gravity increased significantly, 4 times as much, when they moved half the distance, they closed half the distance between them. And so that's how the force of gravity will work, and we'll, we'll do a lot of these force of gravity type problems in this chapter. But you'll see that any time they move farther away, the force of gravity goes low. Whenever they move closer together, the force of gravity goes up. And they, and they do that following this inverse square law. Let's look at another example now. Um, example problem number two says, two spaceships currently feel a gravitational force of 100 newtons between them. What would happen, what would the force of gravity be between them if the distance between them were increased by a factor of 5 and be decreased by a factor of 5? Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing on this problem. I'm going to draw a picture. Here's our spaceships. And so, let's see. And currently, they feel this force of gravity between them of 100 newtons. And part A says, what would the force of gravity be if you increased the distance between them by a factor of 5? And so on part A, let's draw the picture again. Let's keep this spaceship in the same position. But this one's going to be increased by a factor of 5. Let's see, that might be 2, 4, so it might be over here, maybe not perfectly to scale, but that's five times farther away. Now we're supposed to find the force of gravity between them. And remember, force of gravity is equal and follows the inverse square law. So one over the distance between them squared. And now the distance between them, we don't know what it is, but we know that it's increased by a factor of five. So it got five times farther away. So in the place of the distance here, I'm going to put a 5. So that's 1 over 5 squared, which is equal to 1 over 25. And so when you find this, this what this means is that the force of gravity is now 1 25th times what it was before. What it was before was 100 newtons. And so if we take and, and times that by 1 25th or simply divide it by 25, we see that the new force of gravity is 4 newtons. And so just as we'd expect, when they moved farther away from each other, we are seeing the force of gravity go down. And it goes down quite dramatically um, because of the inverse square law. So now they only feel 4 newtons of force between them. Okay, if we look at um, part B on this question, it says, how would the force of gravity change if they were to decrease the distance between them by a factor of 5. 
And so now they're getting closer together. Again, I'm gonna keep this left spaceship in its same position. And now I'm gonna move it in by five times. Let's see, that would be twice as much, four times, somewhere around here. And so now they got a lot closer. And we can, you know, get a good idea of what the force of gravity is going to be doing here. It should go up. They get closer together, the force of gravity should go up. And so let's see if that's the case. Well, we know that the force of gravity follows the inverse square law, which is 1 over d squared. And now our, our distance here is decreasing by a factor of 5. So it decreases by this factor of 5. And so what that means, it's 1 over, it decreases, you're going to have a, a fraction on the bottom, so 1 fifth. That's a factor of 5, and we've got to square it. And so if we solve that, we have 1 here, we square 1, which is still 1, and we square 5, which is 25. And again, we have 1 divided by 1 fifth, and so if you take and times it by the reciprocal, that'll be 25 times. So what this means again is now the force of gravity is 25 times what it was before. And if it was 100 newtons before, so 100, and we times it by 25, you'll see that the new force of gravity is 2,500 newtons. And so, just as we had expected, if they get closer together, the force of gravity goes up, and it goes up by by uh, quite a bit. So if they decrease the distance between them by a factor of five, they'll get 25 times more gravity than was there originally. And so there's a couple questions with um, dealing with the force of gravity and the inverse square law. Let's look at another, this is our last example problem, but in this one we're going to look at how light is affected by the inverse square law. And we can calculate the intensity of light based on the inverse square law. And so let's go through this example. It says, while taking a picture of your friend who is five meters away from the light source, the light intensity measures three lumens. Lumens is a um, unit for measuring light intensity. The question here says, how far should you have your friend stand from the light source if you wanted them to be in six lumens of light? So up here we had three lumens of light and we want them to be in six lumens of light, which is twice as bright. Okay, so again, I'm gonna try and do my best at drawing a picture for this situation. So here's you, okay, and your camera. And um, your light source, I guess, is, is the flash on your camera, or there could be a, a, a light bulb where you're standing. Um, and that's shining on your friend who is, let me switch colors, who it said was f um, five meters. Yeah, it says your friend is five meters away. Okay, so I'm going to draw your friend here. Okay, and the distance between you two right now is five meters. All right, now. If we, uh, if we look at and see how this problem is going to work, it says, how far should you have your friends stand from the light source if you wanted them to be in six lumens of light? Well, light intensity follows the inverse square law, one over the distance between the two objects squared. Okay, so this is light intensity on the left side, and this is the dis one over the distance between the objects squared. Now it says here, and this is the key part of problems like this, you want there to be six lumens of light, not three. So that's increasing by a factor, you're timesing it by two basically. And so your light intensity is being times by two. So I'm gonna bring that down and I'm just gonna put a two here. Our light intensity has to be twice as much. And I'm gonna set that equal to the inverse square law, one over d squared. We're trying to find the distance that your friend should stand in order to make it twice as bright on them. And so if we set 2 equal to 1 over d squared and then solve for our distance here, that will tell you how far your friend should stand in order for her to appear 
twice as bright. Okay, so if we solve this equation right here for d, what I'm going to do is times both sides by d squared and this side by d squared. And so on this side, they're going to cancel out. And so what you get there is 2d squared is equal to 1. Now I'm going to get, try to get d by itself, so I'm going to divide by 2. On this side it cancels out, and so d squared is equal to 1 half. And now you've got this square, you have to take care of that. To get rid of it on, on, on the left side, I'm going to take the square root, but I also have to take the square root of the other side. And so I'm going to bring it up here. Our distance then is going to be equal to the square root of one half. Okay, and if you take the square root of one half on my calculator, it says that is equal to 0 0.707. And so what this is telling us is now the new distance, if we want the, the light intensity to be, to be twice as bright, the new distance has to be 0 0.707 times what it was before. And remember, our distance before was 5 meters. And so if we times that by 0 0.707, that will give us a, our new distance. And so 5 times 0 0.707, our new distance here is going to be equal to 3 point, let's see, round it to two decimal places, 5.4, 3.54 meters. And so let me uh, change colors again. What that is telling us, and this is your answer, 3.54 meters, is if you brought your friend in from five meters to 3.54, 3.54 meters she would be uh, or he would be twice as bright in the photograph and, and have twice as much light on them and photographers use the inverse square law all the time um, figuring out how much light they want to put on their subject when they're taking pictures but it's uh, just another example of how the inverse square law can be used in science all right so what I've got for you in your video physics assignment is three questions that are very similar to the ones that we have just gone through. So again, if you, if you get a little confused with these uh, questions, remember, go back through the video, watch them again, and, uh, and try it again. And, and most likely we'll, we'll be able to catch on. If you still have problems though, as always, I'm, I'm available anytime. Uh, bring it in and I'll help you solve it. It won't take long. But uh, good luck. I'll scroll through them slowly so that you have time to write down the, the questions and um, good luck.